Hey everybody, welcome back. We have an awesome class for you guys today. This is going to be a lesson class. We're going to go over several different variations of a side headlock and we're also going to talk about preemptive striking, the importance of doing that, and then how we do uh, the infamous power slap, which is a lot of fun to practice. So for now, we're going to get going with our warm up. We're just going to be jogging in place for now, just bouncing up off the balls of the feet. Uh, you guys can uh, obviously structure these warm ups to be as long as you want to, but we're just going to get the blood pumping and get straight into our lesson today. So jogging in place, ready and go. Bouncing up off the balls of the feet. About 10 more seconds. Now high knees, same thing, just higher, high knees. 10 seconds. And time now, heel kickers, heel kickers. Ten seconds. And time. Just relax for a second. Now we're going to do the, the windmill style toe touches. So I'm going to have my feet nice and wide. Touch the opposite toe. Come all the way up. Opposite toe. Try to keep those legs straight. Ready and go. Getting a little bit of a stretch in this as well. I'm all the way up every time. Doing great, keep going. Trunk twist, trunk twist, side to side. You can start off with your arms kind of close to your body and then as you loosen up a little bit more, you can extend your arms and really throw them. Keep going. And time. Now we're going to do walking push-ups. Many of you know how to do these, so I'm just bending with, er, with my legs straight, walking all the way out to a plank position, hitting one push-up, walking back. Feet about shoulders width apart. Go. Keep a good steady pace. We're going to do these in total for about 20 seconds. Ten more seconds. Last one. All right, now everybody's favorite warm up. We're going to do a total abdominal destruction now. So I'm going to have Danny turn and face that way and do a break fall for me. Matt can step up. So Danny is going to grab Matt's heels like his Achilles. And then uh, Danny's goal is to keep his, his feet together and his toes up in the air. Uh, Matt's goal is to try to make him touch the ground. So Danny, go ahead and point your feet up at the ceiling. So he's just going to throw those. He can throw them to the side, straight out in front, all that. So time for a second. So a uh, basic version of doing this is just keep your butt on the ground and, and just worry about your feet. If, you ha if you've been doing this for a little while, if you've got a good strong core and you want to make it a little bit more advanced, you can try to elevate your hips up off the mat the entire time. So we're going to do this for about 30 seconds each. So here in about four seconds, we'll get started. Go ahead and get in the position and go. 30 seconds. And that's being very nice to Danny because Matt knows that he is going next. <laughs> Five seconds, you can do it. And time. Great job. All right, Matt's turn. Get started. Ready? Go. 30 seconds.
Ten seconds. And time. Great job, great job. Okay, now we're going to get straight into our lesson because we're definitely warmed up at this point. Uh, okay, take a quick water break, uh, small sips. Uh, but now we can go straight into uh, preemptive striking and the power slap. So the idea here is um, if, if I determine that a confrontation is imminent, uh, per the philosophy of the concepts of Krav Maga, we want to be the attacker, if at all possible, and for as much of the confrontation as possible. Uh, so uh, we, this is, this is going to be based on a decision that is made by the practitioner, uh, which I, I have nothing to do with as your instructor. I'm teaching you how to do a power slap right now, and I am telling you that this is a preemptive strike, meaning I'm hitting first. Uh, but as far as when to make that decision, that's obviously uh, th that's going to be based on a huge number of different variables, and it should be based on everything that's going on, you know, the totality of the, of the surrounding uh, circumstances uh, before we make this decision. But we're just going to go over how to technically do the, the power slap today. So on a power slap, uh, we're going to talk about how to get good body sponsorship uh, and how to disguise it as well, how to disguise that we're about to do this. So uh, Matt's going to hold the paddle target at just straight up in the air so obviously this would be like his neck and this is his face and I want uh, pad holders to hold it at your head level so if my partner's way taller than me I'm gonna have to reach up and maybe the technique is is so you know they're so much taller than me that I determined that okay if the guy's that tall power slap doesn't even make any sense so always hold at the, the level uh, your head level pad holders now my goal is to drag straight across and I'm gonna be hitting obviously with my palm heel I don't want to hit with my palm itself. I want to hit with the bottom part where it comes out of my wrist. How I know that I'm hitting the correct target is I want to line up my fingers with his ear. If I think about touching my fingers to his ear, the heel of my hand is going to be right on the jaw, and that is the target. So what we want to have happen is the hard heel of the hand making contact with the hard jaw of their face. So as I do this, uh, this does require a certain degree of wind up and as we know that would be me telegraphing my intentions I don't want to telegraph my intentions because he might block he might get away he might do something and, and obviously the technique wouldn't wouldn't be possible at that point so we want to disguise that so at first we can simply make sure we're in a good stance this is just practicing we, we just want to get our bodies to understand you know what we're doing here I can wind up all I want I'm not worrying about telegraphing I'm just learning how to do the technique and I'm dragging through I line it up and then I go through what I want you to think about is I'm bringing it through like I'm gonna to touch myself in the ribs okay so the apex of the strike is here I'm using my body dragging boom and coming through and I'm not allowing my shoulder to get ahead of my strike that's really really important if I allow my shoulder to get ahead of my strike uh, my arm is going to become all the way straight and depending on where you hit somebody in the face they can pro provide a little bit of resistance so I might hyperextend my elbow because it might get all the way straight wouldn't want to do anything like that I'm leading with my hips I'm dragging through and I'm closing my arm so like I'm gonna go and touch myself on the ribs on the opposite side of my body so I'm gonna be out like I said at this point I'm not worrying about telegraphing I'm just smacking this thing as hard as I possibly can it should feel decent to you uh, if you're hitting with the correct part of your hand it shouldn't shouldn't cause any pain or anything like that obviously we're using a target that I can strike through if I hit a paddle target or, or sorry a, a focus mitt his arm might provide a little bit too much resistance for just getting uh, learning it right now. So find something that I can drag through. So I'm here and I close my arm. Okay. So we're just going to do that about you know five, five, six times each. Okay. He's just practicing the motion. He's not worrying about how it looks at the moment. He's just worrying about his angles using good body sponsorship, dragging through with his hips, all that good stuff. Okay, yeah, do it. Boom, nice. Now let's switch.
One more. And time. Okay, so practice that until it feels decently comfortable to you. Now let's talk about disguising that uh, telegraph. So uh, if, if you're going to be able to do Krav Maga in a real life situation, hopefully based on the decisions that you make about where you put yourself and, and being aware of your surroundings, all that good stuff, hopefully you don't have to defend yourself. But if you do, uh, and if, if you want to be able to use techniques like this, we have to act a little bit in our training. Because if it's reality-based training, if we completely remove the human element of interacting with somebody socially, that's not reality-based training, okay? So if we're just walking up, placing a gun to somebody's head, going like this, and we're all robotic about it, you know, we can learn the defenses that way. We can get good at where we're grabbing the gun and where we're punching and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but it's, it's taken out a lot of what actually happens in a robbery, which is obviously a very, you know, high stress, huge journal and dump. It's the worst day of your life. We want to be a little bit, uh, you know, we want to be a lot more reality based than that. So you do have to act a little bit, okay? So I always tell my students, you know, we don't, I don't want them to, when we're doing stress drills, and the gun is the easiest uh, example to point out, but I don't want them to just do all robotic like that. I want, to, I want them to push them, shove the gun in the face, hold a gun in a way that doesn't make sense or maybe a way that does, whatever. Um, so for this particular scenario, I wouldn't just walk up and just smack somebody. Okay, there's going to be a lot more. If I make the decision to hit somebody, which I'm not telling you when that decision should be made, but there's probably going to be a lot of interaction. Hopefully you're just not walking around slapping people. Uh, there's going to be some pushing, some posturing, things like this. And so one of the easiest ways I can, I can not telegraph or I can disguise my telegraph, my intentions, is by moving a lot, okay? So for example, if I want to slap Matt right in the face, okay, if I'm here and I'm really stiff, by the time I go to do something, he just sees a lot of movement before it actually happens, okay? So if I'm really still, any movement that he does see, you know, he, he picks up on it really quick. If I'm moving all over the place, if I'm talking with my hands, if I'm doing this kind of stuff, it's a little bit harder to tell, like, okay, he's moving all over the place. I don't know which movement. And so what, I, what I'm doing here is I'm saying, look, I'm moving around a lot. And I'm moving and I'm not hurting you. I'm not a threat to you. I'm not striking you right now. And so it's hard to determine this movement, which he knows is safe from the movement that is not safe for him. Okay, so now if Danny's holding the pad for me, so now instead of like lining up and making it look like I'm going to hit, now I'm going to be doing like this. Is, this is my favorite way to do it because I feel like I can talk like this with my hands and this might be, this is similar to how I would be if somebody was being really aggressive to me, okay? If this guy's in my face, he's far enough away that I don't have to be, have my fence up, I'm like, what is your problem? You know, this is a natural thing to do. When I get my hands off like this, I can come in and I can, I can slap quickly and I'm just kind of disguising it. So you got to act a little bit. You know, you know, I'm not asking you to come up with a bunch of lines or anything. We just have to, you know, show some body language here. So now what I want you guys to do is rather than standing back like in a really good stance, you can stagger one foot back if you want, uh, but I just want you to be here and then launch straight into the motion from there. So we go one, two, like what are you, what are you doing? Boom. Just like that. Okay. Let's give it a try. Yeah, depending on who you're training with, you can talk to them, have some fun with it. <laughs> Dude, seriously. Oh, man. <laughs> Wait, hey, 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 hey. Time switch. Good job. Maybe certain phrases can, you know, bring out the best energy. I don't know. Just that's a joke. That is a joke. We don't do that in Krav Maga. Calm down. <laughs> All right. And time. Okay, so you can go back and forth, slap as much as you want. We're going to move on though. Uh, so now an important thing about <clears throat> preemptive striking. So why, why would I do that? What are the benefits of that? Well, number one, uh, one of the 
common questions that I get uh, people email me. Uh, one, one thing that I, I've, I have been asked uh, several times over the years is the, the quickest way to end an altercation is like a common thread, uh, fastest way to knock somebody out, that sort of thing. Uh, I truly believe, uh, based on, on my training and you know fight analysis, like studying security camera footage and that kind of thing, I truly believe that an open hand, a well-placed open hand slap like what we're doing right now, the power slap, to the jaw uh, is certainly one of the most effective ways. I, I don't like answering questions like, oh, this is the best way, because that would imply that I understand uh, violence, real life violence, which no one person in the world does. That's, that's ridiculous. Uh, it's, there's so many variables, nobody could ever possibly understand it. But this is certainly a very effective way. So if I'm not in a great position to defend myself, uh, you know, and this guy's big and he's really aggressive and I feel like maybe he is is more aggressive than I am and capable of being right now, if that makes sense. So he's really angry, he's really drunk, he's really whatever, and I'm just really scared. Because I don't know this guy and I don't want to fight with this guy, and I'm just having difficulty really like, so I, I feel like if we got in a fight right now, if it was a back and forth, he might over overpower me. Because after all, that's one of the concepts in Krav Maga. If they attack, attack us with level eight intensity, we absolutely have to be at a level 10 if, if we plan on, on surviving. So if I strike first, first, okay, maybe I'll knock him out and that's it. May, or maybe I knock him to the ground and he is out enough that he isn't able to fight with me anymore. I can get out of there. I can disengage. I can do whatever I need to do. But at the very least, I hit first and so I'm on the attack and I have the ability to hit again. So that's a very important concept here. So we practice the power slaps, you know, practice that as much as you want. But then I have to understand, I can't just do a power slap and then just sit there and watch and just hope for the best. I have to be prepared to disengage, to move forward, and to move to a position of control from there. So one important thing that I, I try to get people to understand a lot is that if I it's more important to hit somebody than it is to make it the best hit in the world. Because even if I flick somebody in the nose, if I can get this reaction, I know I can hit them again. And if I can hit them again, I can probably hit them again and again and again. And they don't, so they essentially never recover from the first hit by the time the confrontation is over. So now the drill that I want you to do is I'm, gonna, I'm not actually going to slap him, okay? But I'm going to go here and then I'm going to move right into my side or my, my full clinch rather. Okay. So I, all I'm doing is I'm, I'm hitting first and then I'm moving into, I'm practicing engaging and, and moving further. Okay. So if you're hitting pads, maybe we can flow this in uh, with a kickboxing combination, just some punching combination. So maybe we can do a big power slap and then we can go hook, cross, hook or and, and knee or, you know, something like that. But for now, what we're going to practice is going one and then two, boom, and then out. Because we just did this in a recent class, uh, so it's, it's kind of like some review as well. But again, the concept here is just because you hit him, it would be great if we just knocked him unconscious and they, we could just casually walk away and everything's fine, uh, but we have to hope for the best and plan for the worst. So we're hitting first, we're on the attack, but then we continue and we, we have the ability to hit more and we're establishing some control as well. Okay, So we're going to do that. Uh, let's do that two for two. Danny, you go first. So you slap first. Slap. Boom. And disengage. Yes. Now don't forget you're acting too. Go, hey, what's up? You know, and then hit. You don't have to say anything. It's fine. Hands out and then hit. Matt, it's your turn. <laughs> That's why he's just staring at you. Nice. Nice. Hey, hey. Danny's turn. And do make contact with his face right where you want to. I mean, don't, don't hurt him, but do hit him in the face. He was doing it to you. Nice. There you go, Matt.
Two more for Danny, and then we'll move on. And time. Great job, great job. So, um, that's the preemptive striking concept, and it's also an example of a preemptive strike. Uh, we find that there's posturing. So there's, there, it, you know, a fight doesn't just obviously happen out of nowhere. There's normally some pre-threat or pre-fight indicators, uh, uh, like some posturing. So like pushing, like sticking the chest out, this sort of thing. And, and luckily, for some reason, uh, one of the, the common things that people do when they're posturing at each other is this kind of thing. They buck up, chest out, and the hands are down for some reason. It, does, it doesn't make any sense from a training perspective, uh, but if the chin is out and open, then a power slap would, would be one of the best things that we can do in that, in that particular situation. Uh, so that is that. Now moving straight on to the side headlock. So we're actually going to do three variations of this today, and this is going to be based on some different variables that they can throw at us, and I can teach you 600 variations of a side headlock, not that they actually exist, but I, I can teach you a lot, and it's still going to be something a little bit different in real life, okay? Because when I get attacked and I start to defend, if they're actively hitting me or actively trying to drag me down or whatever, they are going to change what they're doing as well. An attacker doesn't just sit here in a side headlock and just wait for you to do something about it. Uh, they are actively moving with you as well. So the reason that we're going to do several variations today is to cover some of those different variables. But again, you have to understand the concept. You have to understand why we're doing what we're doing. And then you're going to be able to attack them back, even from a position, a disadvantageous position. Uh, and you're going to be able to figure it out anyway, no matter how they do it. Because I, you know, we can, we can go over all these variables in training, and it still might be a little bit different in real life. So the first thing that we're going to do, I'll have Danny help me out first. So side headlock like this. He's going to pull me down, and I'm going to have to catch myself, obviously. Uh, if I don't catch myself with my foot, take a big step, it, it can be almost like a hip toss. He can get me to the ground. So the first thing I'm going to do is come around, strike, reach over, and grab what I can grab. I can shove that, peel that back, and come up. I can strike to the throat, punch, disengage from there. So uh, depending on uh, which curriculum we've already seen, if you've, if you've watched our DVD series, uh, you may be somewhat familiar with that. Uh, the main thing that I want you to be aware of, in addition to catching yourself, reaching around, is I'm using that momentum to strike him, and it's not anything special. It's just an open hand slap right to the groin, kind of like the power slap like we just did. That's a good way to think about it. I slap, boom, but I'm also reaching over as well. Some people face this way, and so they have a difficult time reaching up. That's not going to be good. I'm going to have to turn and face my torso, my, my sternum, towards him. That way I can reach straight over, okay? If he had some hair, I could grab some hair. Everybody has eyes, okay? I can, I can reach and grab those. I can dig my thumb underneath the chin, but whatever I grab, I want it to be pretty painful when I grab him, and I want to be able to make him look directly up at the ceiling. So I'm not trying to push this way or trying to push him away. I'm trying to actually make him look up. Then I can start to hit. When I make him look up, that goes from... Uh, you know, muscle versus muscle to pain compliance. If I grab in your eye socket and I yank back, I promise you, you're going to go with me to try in an attempt to alleviate the pain. Once that happens, we can hammer fist the exposed throat, we can punch him in the jaw, whatever, we can disengage from there. So it's a fairly simple defense if you think about it that way. Boom, up, uh, boom, 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 then I can disengage. Okay. Also, one more time. As I do this, and I'm here, when I come up, if he's providing some resistance, uh, hopefully I do such a good job with my hand on the face or in the eyes or on the hair, whatever the case might be, that he gets up for me. But if I need, if he's uh, bearing down some weight on me, if I need a little bit of extra help, I want to look up at the ceiling myself. So I'm making him look up at the ceiling, but I'm also looking up myself. So I'm using my neck against his arm and straightening my posture out then I'm able to defend myself. So they're going to do that a, a, a little bit more in a little bit more dynamic way because they're not demonstrating. Uh, let's just go back and forth with that. So yeah, you get them. Boom. Right into a clinch. Beautiful. Very nice. OK. 
Good. And notice he's disengaging every time. And not just walking away. Did I see a web strike in there? Because that was awesome. I love web strikes. Good job. Yeah. <laughs> and time. So feel free to pause the class, go over that as many times as you need to, that particular defense. Email us with questions if you have them. Uh, but now I want to talk about some specific combatives because what I see sometimes is people understand like the big gross motor skills, uh, which I guess it's, it's really all gross motor skills. We try not to use fine motor skills as much as possible because with a big adrenaline dump, that those kind of go out the window, the fine motor skills. That's why we don't grab wrists specifically and try to do that kind of stuff too much. Uh, but anyway, I digress. I just want to go over some specific combatives. Um, when you are here, okay, I'm saying if I make him look up, I expose his throat, I can hammer fist. I think I saw Danny do a web strike, which is great. That's when I open up my hand, I've got the web of my hand and I'm just ramming it right into the base of the throat here, right at, uh, at some people call that the cough point, this thing right here. But if I hit him there, I, I can get a good result out of that. Matt was actually punching, hammer fisting his own hand. You can do that as well. Uh, it transfers through your hand just like in, in croquet. If I hammer fist my own hand, it's just like a really powerful slap there. I can hammer fist towards the jaw. Uh, I can I can punch, but based on the angle, uh, it might be a little bit difficult for me. I always want to punch with my front two knuckles if possible. So if I'm trying some sort of an uppercut my here, uh, right here, I certainly might hit with my pinky uh, knuckle or my ring finger knuckle. Wouldn't want to do that. So just remember that you need to have uh, good body alignment here. You need to be structurally sound. I hit, and if and if uh, if he's really bearing down on me, maybe I hit a couple times and so I find what I need to find up here. I raise up with everything and I continue striking and just get him off of me. Just get him, you know, I'm attacking him the whole time. Just get him off of me. And then uh, if, if we're still in a confrontation, I'm in a position where I haven't really been, I mean, nothing, he didn't crank on my neck hard enough to really injure me. I'm good to go. And he just got beat up a lot. I just hit him in the groin several times. I probably injured his eye. He might not be able to see very well if I grabbed into his eye socket. I might have yanked some hair out. I hit him in the throat. He's coughing. You have to think about it like that. Like what would really happen if we actually did these things? Okay. So those are some specific, um, you know, places. I want you guys to do uh, slow motion and then a fast one now. So not the three speeds. We're only going to do two speeds, and we'll do this one for one just a couple more times, just so we can highlight which combatives you're doing. So we see a slap, making him look up, hammer fist, kind of punches, yeah, to a clinch, wants to give him some more, then he disengages. That's good. Now let's do a fast one. Boom. Yeah. Use the wall. Love it. Now slow motion for Danny. Highlight exactly what you're doing. He's really uh, putting emphasis on... Notice how he, uh, he dug in under the jaw with his, with his thumb. That was, that was really good there. Nice. Good. And time. Okay. So now we're going to do something a little bit different because we, we want to attack each other with realistic training angles and we want to be going live as an attacker as best we can, whenever we can, uh, obviously maintaining safety, not hurting anybody. So now we have to think, okay, somebody grabs you here, were they trying to do some sort of like a, you know, carry you over the hip and make you fall? Were they trying to just hold you down for some reason? Or are they grabbing you and punching you? Whatever the case might be. So now let's add another layer to the attack. That was just them manipulating our head. Now they're trying to punch us as well. Okay, so if Danny grabs me, if I'm already down here like this, maybe he's grabbing my head and he's punching me repeatedly. Okay, 
Now, I, I have to address this. So I would say, you know, addressing the immediate threat, everything is bad right now. But I certainly can't get hit over and over again because that's going to take away greatly my ability to defend myself. So what I'm going to do is my arm back here that's around on his back, okay? I'm going to reach around and grab his arm, okay? It, as he's hitting me, I can be, uh, it's, it's going to be instinctive. It's certainly a natural reflex to, to reach up, but I'm going to pass and I'm going to get this arm here. Okay? So now, because I'm grabbing his arm, I'm taking away his ability to, to hit me just for a second because he'll, he'll get out of here eventually. It's not the strongest hold in the world, but I, I don't have my, uh, my hand here to make him look up because it's occupied. It's doing something. So what I'm going to do is come out the back. I'm going to take this hand, find his elbow, and I'm just going to open the door as I shoot back. Obviously, from here, I still have some control. Hey, I can you know, do some more combatives, whatever the case might be. Main thing is here, let's turn around real quick. I don't want to be underneath at the wrist here. Hey, I want to be out behind the elbow because I want to pry it open like this. I don't want to make it go forward or anything. So I block, I grab his arm, I'm coming here, and I'm shooting back as best I can. Then I can hit him over the top, you know, whatever the case might be, okay? So let's go over that. Blocking, passing, then we can open the door to get out, okay? Let's just do this a couple times back and forth, just slow. And then he's just gonna choke him out. <laughs> Pass, yes. Open the door. Good. Try to find that elbow as best you can and open the door. Yeah. One more time, peace. Last one. Good. Okay, and time. So, <clears throat> Obviously, uh, those are two different ways of, of defending against the same attack, and it's based on you know, the different variables that they're bringing to us. There are certainly ways to tie them up and take them down. We can roll forward. Uh, we can do more of like a hip toss, uh, kind of, not, not a hip toss, but more like a suplex kind of deal almost. Lots of different things that we can do, but there's a common theme in both of those different defenses, which is strike really hard, at vulnerable areas that cause a lot of pain, uh, hopefully soften them up, and then it's to disengage at the earliest opportunity. So I, I just want to point that out. Like there's certainly some kind of wrestling oriented things that we can do, some jujitsu oriented things that we can do. We want to rely on lots of striking and get out of there as quickly as possible. Those, that's, that's, that's a common thread here. So now we're going to do one more, uh, and it's, it's very, very similar to that. And we're just going to assume that the intensity of the strike it's just too much for us to deal with or whatever. Maybe they're too tall. Maybe I can't effectively reach and grab that arm. Whatever the case is, I'm being attacked. I'm not able to, re I, I don't, maybe I don't have uh, my, my balance, okay? Because if I reach over, that, that, I need that foot there, okay? I need to have caught myself and be able to drive later, okay? So maybe he, he just really made this terrible for me. He's really putting a lot of pressure on me. And then as I reach, I just can't, you know, he, he's, he's blading his body too much and I can't reach the arm. I'm going to have to still block my face. I can kind of bisect my head. Hopefully I'm, I'm uh, absorbing a little bit of that. I'm going to drop down on my same side, leg. I'm going to hit the roof, then I'm going to go that way. Now one thing that I don't want to do is look at the ground and make this worse on myself, okay? Because this is a side headlock. If I go like this, I can make it uh, more of a choke. 
So I'm still looking at him, no matter how hard he's squeezing my head, how hard he's pulling me around the corner. If I'm looking at him, he is not choking me right now. I am fine. You can hear me talking. Okay. So I, I don't have my foot where I need it. I can't grab the arm because he's hitting me. I'm still blocking. Okay. I'm going to go one, two, and out. Maybe I can hit him again. Start to attack him from there. Let's go around. So we're going from a really, really bad place. I can't get my foot there. I can't posture up. I can't reach over. I can't grab his arm. Really, really bad. Block, drop, hit. That's just a ridge hand. Hit to the groin. Maybe I need a couple of them. Then I'm going to go to the elbow, push away. And now I'm out. I can return something if you want to. One more time. I'm here. Hit. Out. Just like that. Let's try that. Uh, slow motion and then a little bit faster. One for one. So really turn. <clears throat> so before we get going, I want to make clear why we're doing this, this different defense. Before we pulled them around to where they could take that step, and then we talked about here where they can easily grab and, and get that arm. Okay. What we're talking about now is they really step up so much that we're here, and now he can't, he can't grab my arm, and he, he doesn't have his foot in front of me like he needs to, but he can certainly drop down and hit me and then pry. So they're so far around that none of that other stuff is possible. This is the last thing we're going to do uh, for this, this uh, attack. Go ahead. There we go. Boom. If they think that they're attacking you and then you start hitting them viciously and repeatedly in the groin, that changes things a little bit. Stomping on that knee, I like it. Don't forget to push on that elbow, open the door. A couple more times. Last one. Now you do one more. Nice. I like how you're really looking at him. That was good. Okay. Uh, be sure when you do these classes, especially the drill classes where we really work hard and get really sweaty, uh, be sure you're doing some sort of a cool down. We're going to lead you through just a little one today, uh, but anything, uh, you, you can normally just kind of do a mental scan of your body, anything that's extra tight. Uh, don't just immediately go sit down. I know I've told you this before. Don't just go sit down on the couch and start drinking water. Uh, you don't want to tighten up. So we're just going to roll those arms forward, kind of like we do at the beginning of class. This is just an example cool down that, that you should be doing at the end of your workouts. Circle the other way. We can cross them. And now let's stretch one arm across. We certainly used our, our arms a lot today, the shoulders. Let's go to the other side. Just kind of generally uh, stretch out. We say, uh, let's go ahead and stretch our, our forearms out. So just grab your fingers, pull them back towards yourselves. We generally say it's best to do mobility type stuff at the beginning of the workout. So ballistic stretches instead of, of static stretches. Now that the workout's over, now we can do stretches. Uh, go ahead and switch, guys. Now we do stretches where we hold it for a little bit longer. Uh, the only thing is when I'm doing a static stretch, when I'm holding it and breathing deeply in order to stretch everything out, if my heart rate is still really high, now let's grab the backs of the hands, backs of the hands, we're stretching this, the top of the arm here. If, uh, if my heart rate is still really high, if it's still beating really hard, I probably shouldn't hang my head underneath my heart if I'm still actively like, you know, just from my workout. So uh, go ahead and switch if you haven't already. So we'll keep the head above the heart, but we are going to do uh, some stretching in, in which we hold it a little bit. Now let's go ahead and have a wide stance. Push out on the inside of your legs. Good deep squat. <sighs> Breathe in deeply. <sighs> now we'll hold ourselves on the mat, reach over, and just squat down on only one leg. So the other leg is outstretched, the heel's on the mat, the, or the ground, 
toes are pointed up at the ceiling. You can lean forward, lean towards the leg to increase the stretch. Now let's slowly take it over to the other side. Staying nice and balanced the whole time. Now I can slowly go side to side. All righty. So obviously, uh, anything that's tight, you know, just take some time, uh, make it make it like an active cool down rather than just going and sitting down. Uh, we we hope that you guys had a wonderful class today, and we really look forward to working with you again soon. Thank you.